Hello, I'm your professor, Dr. Stephen Haggard, and today I'd like to talk to you about an article I read in the Wall Street Journal that I think has a lot to say about capital budgeting, and that article is called Tech to Track Errant Kegs. It's from the June 21st, 2018 edition of the Wall Street Journal. It showed up in print then. It showed up online the day before, and I actually prefer that version of the article because it has some additional information. Unfortunately, when they're putting articles together for the Wall Street Journal print, they got to make them fit on a piece of paper, so of course they have to cut some things out. Anyway, this is a uh, topic that's near and dear to many college students' hearts, and that is the beer keg. And it turns out that beer kegs cost breweries about $100 a piece. And they're made of steel, and if you take care of them right, they'll last about 10 years. So if you amortize that out, you know, you're looking at, say, $10 a year as far as accountants would think about these things. Now, here's the problem. About 10% of kegs go missing every year. And uh, this is a big problem. What happens is after a bar gets empties a keg, a lot of times they just put it out back and then the brewery picks it up the next day when they make their delivery of fresh beer. Now, if you ever go to Central Europe, uh, try to get a hotel room or a, an Airbnb or something like that close to the old town. Spend a little extra, get close to the old town, because it's always interesting to see what kinds of things happen there. And one of the things that I like to do when I go to one of these places is to get up early in the morning and walk around and don't just walk down the main streets, walk behind things. And one of the things that you'll see behind the bars are just mountains and mountains of empty kegs. And so here's the problem. They're just out there for anyone to grab, and people do. In fact, if you do an internet search, you can probably find videos where people have stolen kegs and turned them into other things, including a urinal. Now, by the way, stealing is wrong, and even if you don't have a moral compass, it's illegal, so you shouldn't be doing it for that reason. So don't do that. I'm always amazed that people will put incriminating evidence on YouTube. Anyway, back to the story. So this is a real problem, these kegs walking off. And so now there is a tech race to try to figure out how to keep these kegs from going missing. And it all boils down to tags. And the first kind of tag is relatively low tech. It's either a barcode or an RFID tag, radio frequency identification tag. Uh, and basically, those things have to be scanned in order for you to know where the keg is. And so the downfall of this is that you already have to know where the keg is in order to scan it. And so it's not quite as useful. Although one of the companies, one of the breweries in the article mentioned, that their losses had fallen to about 2% a year on their kegs, and that's down from an industry average of around 10% per year. So maybe there's some usefulness to this. I would think this would be useful for basically kegs just getting misplaced. I don't think it would do a whole lot against theft. Now the other kind of tag is uh, GPS, and basically it sits there and knows where it's at based on global positioning system data, and it uses uh, like a cell connection to transmit its location. So the brewery at any given time can tell exactly where their kegs are at. And this is really helpful if your keg kind of walks off because now you can go online and look up the location and hunt it down. Now the downside for these, of course, they need to have a battery, but they've got batteries now that last like 10 years, so that's cool. And then there's also the idea that you have to have cellular data. And anyone who has a mobile phone knows that that's not free. And so it turns out these GPS tags are actually more expensive than the RFID tags. But on the other hand, they're probably more useful because you can actually track down a keg not knowing where it's at. Instead of the RFID system, basically you already know where it is before you track it down. Okay, so now let's talk about this from a capital budgeting perspective. We know that the goal of financial management is to maximize shareholder wealth. And we know that in order to do that, what we need to do is to take on positive NPV, net present value, 
projects. And so we know we need to do NPV analysis to look at these things to see if they're worthwhile. And we know we only accept positive NPV projects. Furthermore, in this situation, we have what's called the mutually exclusive project situation. If I do RFID tags, I'm not going to want to do the uh, GPS tags. And if I do GPS tags, I'm not going to want to do RFID tags. And so now we are left with trying to decide which of these two to do. Well, with mutually exclusive projects, we always want to take the one with the higher net present value simply because that's going to be the one that maximizes shareholder wealth. Remember, the goal is to maximize shareholder wealth, not just to increase it. And so we're going to take the one with the highest NPV. Now, it's easy enough to identify the costs of these systems, especially the GPS one, because you've got your initial investment and then you've got the cost of whatever the data plan or the subscription is. These are the sorts of things that you'd be investing in and then whatever labor it took to affix these things to your kegs. The RFID system has the same sorts of uh, costs, except for probably not a subscription service with the RFID tags, but there's a hidden cost and that is that you have to pay people to go around scanning these ke kegs with some sort of scanner. And so there's a hidden labor cost there that we would need to take into consideration. Now what kinds of costs do we want to consider? We would only consider incremental costs. In other words, ones that would be different only as a result of having taken on the project. And so if we already had an agreement with a company that was going to provide one of these to do something else, we would not include those costs as well. We would only can include the increasing cost as a result of taking on this project. And if we had previously put on some sort of system, let's say we had previously used some sort of barcode system, and now we're looking at these two systems, we should not consider the cost of that barcode system because it is simply a sunk cost, meaning that that is money that's already been spent that we can never get back regardless of the decision that we make on the current project. And so the ones we want to include are incremental costs. We do not include sunk costs. And so we're not going to include that old system. Now the question is, how in the world are we going to make this into a net present value project where do the positive cash flows come from? And the trick is there really aren't any positive cash flows for this situation. What we're looking for here is the avoidance of negative cash flows. The negative cash flows that used to occur from replacing these kegs that walked off. And so we're going to need to make some sort of estimate on what is our going to be our loss rate after and then figure out how many kegs every year that's going to keep from uh, us having to replace. And then that's going to represent your positive cash flow. Okay, well, I have included a link to this article in the comments so you can uh, read this article for yourself. And I've also included a link to allow you to subscribe to the Wall Street Journal. Now, this is assuming you're a student. If you've got a student ID, you can subscribe to the Wall Street Journal for a ridiculously cheap price. And I, I suggest that you do because it'll make you a more interesting person. It's not just stock quotes, folks. There's a lot of good, good stuff in there. And you can keep up to date with what's going on and it will make you more interesting not only in job interviews because you're aware of the external, external environment for your business, it will also make you more interesting at cocktail parties because you'll have interesting, fun things to talk about. So once again, take a look down below for links on this article and the ability to subscribe to the Wall Street Journal for cheap. Thanks.